and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books. I hope you're all having a lovely Sunday she says with a question mark. I think this is going up on Sunday. Um, hope you're all well. Today's um, video is a spring q and A. I love to watch a QA. I love to watch a QA on Instagram. I love to watch a QA on YouTube. And I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any questions. Hundreds of them there were, absolutely hundreds. So I'm about to go to my, so I'm filming this on Good Friday. And we're going to my sister's for what was supposed to be breakfast, but is now becoming brunch because we're now expected at 12. So it's just got 11. I'm going to film as much of these questions as I can get through. It might be long, it might be chatty, it might be rambly. Maybe I should relocate over there. Do you know what? I think I'm gonna. I've been inspired. Mercedes um, filmed some videos um, in front of her sofa and I thought, do you know what? I'll be much more comfortable over there. Let's go over there. Let's, let's. That feels much better and I can actually cross my legs here because I was tr struggling to do that on that chair over there. But um, yeah, sometimes it's nice to film in locations that aren't bookish for bookish, non-bookish related things because all of these questions are not all bookish. So it'll be a bit different. Right, let's go then. That's my knee. <laughs> uh, let's go. Are you finding buying clothes, not buying clothes hard? Now this is in relation to a fashion challenge I'm currently doing over on my Instagram account. Um, I've got a new Instagram account as well as the Lauren and the Books Instagram account called Lauren Dot and the Looks. If you go over to the Lauren and the Books one, you'll be able to, to find the link there. And um, every single day throughout 2024, I am wearing a new outfit, a different outfit based on what's already in my wardrobe. Um, and it's been going on since the beginning of the year. Today is day 89, so it's been going very, very well. Until I recently, and I'm actually wearing this skirt today, I bought myself a new skirt. Now, I know, <laughs> I shouldn't have bought myself the new skirt, but if I just show you it first, I'll show you it first. So it's black and white, very, very versatile, and I could think of a thousand ways I could wear it. It's a, it's a full length sort of silky skirt. And these black and white, I love black and white stripes anyway. Here it is, this length sort of fluted, but also a bit tighter around here. And I saw it in Tesco for 16 pounds and was like, oh my God, I need that skirt. It looks so expensive. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. Like I said, really versatile. I can think of thousands of ways, ways I can wear it. And I thought, oh my God, I, I want it, I need it. And I didn't buy it then and there. Cause I was like, no Lauren, you're doing this fashion challenge. You can't do that. You're also on a low spend year. And then when I went back in Tesco's yesterday to do my shopping, I just had another little look at it just to see if I still felt the same of it. And it was bloody 25% all clothes in there. So it's actually 12 pounds. Now I know the price is irrelevant really, because realistically, if I was gonna buy anything, I would have bought something maybe from a sustainable company or something like that. But I think the fact that I weighed up the purchase by not buying it then and there, I'm making excuses for myself. I didn't buy it then and there. I thought about all the different ways I was gonna wear it. And honestly, this is a skirt I can wear all year round. I can wear it in winter with tights. I'm wearing it today in spring jumpers, t-shirts, vest tops. I can even hitch it up and wear it as a dress should I want to. And I just thought, if I'm gonna allow myself to buy something new this year, which is what I've done, then let it be this early doors-ish to get it out of the system and then let me be able to wear it for the rest of the year and put that into practice. So the answer to your question, how you find it hard uh, not buying clothes, yes. <laughs> Uh, well, no, no, I wasn't until I saw this skirt, but I remedied that by buying it. <laughs> so, uh, tell me what you think of that decision down below. Uh, the next question is, which Easter eggs or egg have you got this year? Um, so it's Easter weekend when I'm filming this. So when you watch this, it'll be gone Easter. Uh, David and I, uh, we are saving money this year, so ordinarily we, we sort of go a bit gifty for Easter um, and buy each other a little bit of gifts, but we didn't we didn't do that. Well, we did do that, but it was very low key. So I bought him, I can't even remember, two three pound eggs and a and a and a one pound egg. He got me a mini eggs egg because I only wanted a little one, and I think he bought that for me out of panic that I would want to eat his. Um, but he also got me a chick shaped scrub daddy for cleaning and. <laughs> a little funnel that I've been asking for for so long because I'm quite keen to make um, some of my own cleaning products I needed a little funnel to be able to put things into bottles I've got a lot of glass bottles um, for spraying and things like that and, and bottles like single-use plastic that I've reused 
and being able to decant into those using the funnel is just going to be perfect so it's something that i've wanted for a long time so yeah only one little egg for me but two very useful products because i needed a new scrub daddy because my current one is falling a, a, a bit it's a scrub mummy actually because it's a sponge and a scrub um and yeah i've wanted a, a little i need to put on my list actually because i've got a list on my phone of things that i want or or need need or want put them on my phone and then i can revisit it when i get my little bit of spending money at the end of the month and think do i still need those well two of the things on there was a scrub daddy and um a funnel so i can take those off because david's bought them for me for easter so very useful easter presents thank you uh how is daphne settling in now she's super cute do you know what she's been amazing so we got daphne our cat from a rescue center um in it was the end of september i think it was the last day of september um last year and we did struggle um for the first few weeks maybe even like a month or so of just her settling in she had a very very bad tummy when she first moved in and did quite a few bloody poos which absolutely scared the life out of me but on calling the vets and on calling the rescue center they said no that's quite often a sign of stress or like upheaval the thing with daphne is is that the rescue center we got her from she'd been there 17 days and the rescue center had got her from another rescue center where she'd been for 14 days and they don't know her history prior to that so when we first got her the first few days although shy she come and sat on our laps a little bit david was away for a few nights and she'd come and sit on the bed with me so for the first few days i was like she's settling in brilliantly and when we got our old cat minnie who we also got from a rescue center she was she she owned the place from literally the second she stepped down she wasn't really that shy. she's a bit nervous but never really shy or anything so we just expected after the first few days i was like she's great she's having a lovely time um but then i think maybe because she was used to being in somewhere for a couple of weeks and then moving on that's when the sort of like bad times for her hit and she had a really bad tummy and was just like shitting in the middle of the floor and loads of bloody poos and stuff like that luckily it was before we got the new carpets for you so we spoke to the um to the to the rescue center we got from um from the vets and they both said go completely back to basics pop her in the room pop her in one room get her to get used to that room almost ignore her because we were sort of like oh good because we were used to like stroking Minnie and cuddling her and getting her to sit on our laps and stuff um they said ignore her if she comes to you tuck like you can stroke her and everything but ignore her and would you know it it worked <laughs> she was absolutely fine and she settled in so well she's so playful she's a completely different cat to Minnie like we're very very lucky to have had two completely different but lovely cats I mean Daphne's probably a little bit lovelier than Minnie Minnie was a bit swipey Daphne is a bit bitey she loves playing and sort of bitey play because I think she just gets so like ah, really into it but she she seems seemingly she loves us she loves playing with David she's always chasing him around and stuff like that she's got a lovely little um she takes herself off to bed because she's she sleeps in the spare room so she doesn't sleep on our bed like Minnie used to she sleeps in the spare room and she's got a sofa she's got a blanket on the sofa in there which is the same color as her so I can never really tell if it's in the night and I've got my glasses on I'm like is she there um but she takes herself off to bed <laughs> before we go to bed and she's in there and then in the morning she comes and jumps on the bed for a little bit wakes us up but yeah she's really playful which Minnie wasn't we got Minnie when she was eight and then we had her till she was very old so she occasionally she played with like a bit of string or something but Daphne absolutely loves her toys she walks around with toys in her um, mouth just and then meowing while she's got toys in her mouth which is very cute she's forever laying on her back with her little legs up and her, her bottom legs like splayed which means she's very relaxed which is lovely so yeah she's very cute she gets so excited so we close this room off of a night we, we always did it with with Minnie as well so in the morning when we open this room up she's like waiting at the door and we call this room Disneyland because she's just so excited to get in so yes thank you for checking in she's doing very very well we're very very pleased with her um do you ever get recognized out and about and is it ever daunting having so much online uh, great question um I have been recognized a few times it's normally in a bookish setting um so i've been recognized at uh, lush book club a few times um and when i've been in bookshops because that's where my people are um people have always been extremely nice and just sort of come over and just say oh, i really love your channel um and yeah it's, it's happened a few times it happened oh once it happened in lush uh, actually that happened in lush when uh, in cambridge when i was with jenna mercedes so the person i was with she came over and she was like oh my god i've just been watching your youtube channel and i was like well you're excited to see me i've got jenna mercedes with me <laughs> so that was more exciting i have been recognized once at the hospital that i work at 
um, I was waiting in the queue um, to buy some lunch or something and the person in front of me turned around and she said oh I'm so sorry um, but I recognised your voice and thought you're someone that I watch on the internet and you are um, and I was like oh wow so that's that's the only time that's ever happened there um, but yeah and in terms of the second part of that question is it daunting having so much online I am careful with what I share online so although the thing is about me is that I'm a very open book like I, I share a lot with everyone so everything like what seems like I'm being extremely open on here I'm even more open with the sort of friends and family and people around me I'm careful to protect myself because I think you just have to be um I never sort of mention really tight geographical locations where I live and stuff I say I live in the southeast of England in Kent which I do um and I never mention like my place of work and things like that um but yeah, it is daunting, but I've been lucky so far that nothing's really affected me. Um, I also try to keep things pretty sort of like neutral on here. And um, well, mainly as an escape from like the awful things that are going on sort of outside of this little square of the internet. I may briefly mention things, but I think it's important to have somewhere to escape. And this is, this is part of my place to escape and part of my place to... Um, sort of forget for a minute what's going on in the real world and stuff um but yeah great question and thanks for asking um how do you stay so happy and upbeat i just love your energy thank you um i think i made a video about this i'll link it down below if i can find it something about being positive um i i guess as i get older it is easier to be beleaguered by things and frustration sometimes wins out but i think as in general i do have a lot of energy and it's probably due to my conserving of energy so i don't have children so i don't have to expend any energy on on children david and i our hobbies are very sort of sedentary in terms of david's been getting very into reading reading cross stitch going to the cinema watching things on television youtube um occasionally like walks and things like that so like yeah i guess our our hobbies lend to us conserving quite a lot of energy um and i don't know i just i guess i just got sort of like a positive outlook on stuff i'm very aware that over the years i've sort of repelled there's things that i've i don't enjoy seeing in other people and that's something like me saying to somebody oh this has happened and then them saying back to me oh that makes me really jealous and i just think oh don't be jealous of me just be pleased for me and i think I've, a lot of the negativities i've seen in other people and don't don't like don't get me wrong i love a good moan <laughs> um but some of the negative behaviors i've seen in other people i thought oh i really don't enjoy receipt being on the receiving end of that so i sort of eliminated that from my vocab so i would never be like oh i feel really jealous of that or like I would just be thrilled for someone because that's how I would want them to feel about me. So it's a lot of it's a lot of work on yourself, I think, but worthwhile for lovely comments to say, how do you stay so happy and upbeat? I love your energy. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And I guess like the people I surround myself with are my champions and are people that I love being around. David, obviously, day to day, but also like my cousin Laura, my sister, my niece, my best friend Emma, like and then my sort of like extended group of friends, they're all wonderful people. So yeah, that's the answer I think. But I'll link that video down below. I wonder what that video is like actually. I hope it's not a bit preachy like, just be happy. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, you did the Queens and the Cazalet Chronicles. What's your next series undertaking? So I've just revisited this actually when I was talking about the, um, the book series that um, uh, my, my bookish sort of plans for the year. I'd love to read the, I think it's called Borchester Chronicles uh, by Anthony Trollope. The first book is The Warden and um, my lovely friend Philippa, um, who I co-host the Archers podcast with, she bought that for me and I've got the second one lined up. So that is what I would like to get to at some point. I should just get to it really because with the Casalet Chronicles, I didn't start that until sort of like in J July and then straight away I was like, I wish I'd started this sooner. I already feel like I want to reread the Castle Chronicles. I might listen to the, I think I might listen to the audiobook as a bit of a, a nighttime sleepy thing. Um, so yeah, those. And then um, 
two more series I mentioned were the Mirror Visitors, which are translated YA, translated from the French, um, and it's sort of like YA fantasy. I've sort of had this des desire. My mum and dad have got a place in France. I haven't been for many years, um, probably because me and my mum would kill each other. <laughs> but um, um, I always think, oh, if I was to go out there again, I'd like to read all four of those books whilst I've been out there. I don't know if they're any good. I haven't really seen all that much about them. I've seen them, meant like they've got beautiful front covers, but I haven't seen them really spoken about on booktube. And then the last one is the Daughter, uh, Daughter of the Forest, is that what it's called? The Juliette Marillier series. I read the first one on Kindle a few years ago. Uh, got it out from the library, not on Kindle, on e-reader. Got it out from the library. Um, and very much enjoyed it but I had to read it in two because I only got it out for 21 days and then it had to go back um so I would like to read it again without that big massive gap in and I own it now um in in paperback so yeah and um Mercedes loved that series so I'd like to give that series a go so there we go three series I'm thinking of um I love seeing how real and lovely you and David are with each other how do you overcome any problems oh that's sweet thank you um I guess we talk a lot we spend a lot a lot of time together so I think um we've we talk a lot about things and we're not afraid to be like, oh, um, I've got a bit of an issue with that. Can we, can we unpack that? We don't often argue. In fact, I could put, <sighs> I'm trying to think of the last time we had an argument. I can, I just cannot. We've been together like over 10 years now. Um, so yeah, we don't often argue. I guess what I will say here is that David's sort of, <laughs> David is, um, David's behaviors and David, the way David is, has really changed since I first met him in a he now appreciates sort of the quieter side of life although I would say like I've changed a lot so like from what I was like in my 20s I loved going out I loved drinking I loved making an idiot of myself on a night out and then piecing it together the next day like those are my favorite things to do and David whether or not that's just a I don't know maybe the I don't, I, David, that for David extended a bit more into his 30s. So when I first met him, he was like that more. And even nowadays, he still enjoys a night out and stuff like that, but I don't. So a lot of our, how, how uh, lovely we are to each other is because we like a lot of the same stuff, but it wasn't like that to start with. But I think we've just adapted to now like a lot more of the same stuff. I mean, everyone likes going to the cinema but like I make sure that I go to the cinema once a week because I know that's what David d enjoys doing and he is happy to sit and read a chapter of his book um for a, an afternoon while I'm 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 reading as well so yeah it's a lot of compromise and just chat I think communication I keep going on recently about how much of a good communicator are, we are and I think um yeah yeah I mean obviously there's there's stuff that comes up but like I say like you don't see all of that on here I'm not saying we're screaming at each other when the, <laughs> when the cameras are off, but like, yeah, it's a lot of chat and a lot of keeping it real and sort of like calling, calling each other out and stuff like that. Or just being like, oh, just to let you know, I don't know if that's the beginnings of something that's going to, yeah. I just think we're very much made for each other as well. Like, I know that feels like a cop out answer, <laughs> but like, I've never met anyone um, like David who gets me. And um, yeah, I'm very, very fortunate. He's a lovely boy, isn't he? He's a lovely boy. Um, have you thought about doing any floss tube videos? So floss tube is cross stitch. I haven't even really got into floss tube. I need to watch some of it. And David, maybe that could be something David and I could do because David loves a cross stitch as well. So yeah, maybe. I mean, I did mention when I did my... Oh, my mum's just text saying she's starving. <laughs> That's because we're supposed to eat after. Um, I did mention that... Um, I would be doing a cross stitch live with me video. So stitch and chat we're gonna do. Stitch and bitch, I believe it's sometimes called. Um, and yeah, I'll be doing that at some point. So I guess that would count as a cross, as a floss tube thing. The thing is, is that a lot of the stuff that I'm doing is presents for people. Um, although not that, well, I think one of these questions is, does your family watch uh, much of your YouTube videos? And I don't actually think they do. Yeah. <laughs> see enough of me in real life without without putting it like that so yeah um i have thought I, I haven't really thought about it i need to watch more of floss tube to find out what happens um will you bring back february or something similar it was always full of great book ideas oh thank you so february was something that i used to run um before i then started taking february off but i didn't take february off this i haven't taken february off for the past two years so maybe it's something i could bring up so february was where i read um 
books about feminism and uh, like female issues and things like that and, and listen to music and um, sort of tried to diversify because I mean I read a lot of I think maybe when I first did this I didn't read as much sort of women authors and, and about women's social issues as I do now it's literally everything <laughs> I'm just looking every single book I'm reading at the moment is written by a woman and this pile of books I've got here that I'm going to read this weekend one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and an audiobook eleven books by women so I feel like February is sort of all year for me now but I agree it was great to have these sort of month of videos where I talk about the music I've been listening to and like ask you guys for um for recommendations and uh films with like female directors and stuff like that so yeah it was a great place for that but hopefully this it feels like February all the time here for you hopefully uh how did you and David meet oh this is a question I get asked often um and I'll, I'll retell the story because I always quite like to retell the story. So um, David and I uh, went to school, not together, we were in schools that were next to each other. We didn't know each other at school. But one night uh, we were, and a few of my friends had said, oh, you'd really like David. He likes the same things as you. He's really into Christmas and blah, 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 blah. And he'd, his name had sort of come up a few times, but I'd never met him. And I'd sort of knew people around him and we had friends in common, but I'd never met him. And then one night I was out, it was my friend Emma's birthday and we'd been out for a curry and we went to the pub afterwards and I was going to France with my parents the next day and we were leaving at like four in the morning so I was driving that night um, it was back in the days when I was drinking so I was driving and I dropped my friends off at, at, at a pub and they said oh come in come in for one and I was like no I've got to get back it was like 11 o'clock I was like I've got to be up in five hours to go to France and they were like I'll oh, just come in for one so I've just parked the car up and went in and then when we went in I'm just telling the story of how we met David um, and then when we went in there was a like a CCTV camera behind the bar and you could see David on it with his friends like further down the bar here he is he's got he's got a towel on so he can't come into the um, and uh, my friends were like oh look who's here look who's here anyway so we went outside um, having a cigarette because I was a smoker in those days as well so was David um, and we got chatting didn't we we did we got chatting and we talked for hours just sort of sat outside chatting and um, then at the end of the night, I came back in and I was like, it's gone midnight or gone one maybe even. Um, I came back in and I was like, I've really got to go. And then my friend said to me, God, you were talking to him for a long time. Did you swap numbers or anything? And I was like, no, I didn't. And I thought, if I don't ask him, like this, this might not ever happen. Like we might not ever come back into like contact again. So I just went back out and I was like, I'm just going to ask you, do you want to exchange numbers or anything? And, well, how did you feel about that? Were you surprised? I was excited. He was excited. He couldn't remember my name. <laughs> um, so when he went to put my number into his phone, he was like, sorry, what's your name? So we've been talking for a long time. Um, yeah. And then I text him the next day um, when we were in France and just said, oh, because I'd already told you, hadn't I, that I was, on, I was going to France the yeah. next day. And, yeah, and then we just text like from that moment on didn't we so we text all the time I was away mm -hmm. and then I met up with him on the night when we got back and we went to the local nightclub and had a little smooch <laughs> and then the following week you invited me round to watch Casino Royale at your parents house <laughs> yeah and yeah from then on I think we were just on weren't we full on there. yeah there was no messing was there, there was not no, really like... which was why I sort of maybe knew that it was different to anything else I'd sort of yeah. been involved in. It's the same with me. I never like truly thought, well, I never truly felt happy with a lot of my like. Oh no, I felt I, really happy. No. <laughs> no, but I, I um, yeah, it just felt like there was no messing. And I think we were just yeah. very honest with each other to start with and yeah. very, yeah, we were just both very just fond clicked. of each other. We, we did clicked. just click. We clicked guys. We just mm. clicked. So that's how we and met. we're still clicking now. There we, and we're still clicking now, aren't we, David? Oh, that's a lovely way to look at it. Lovely. Um, since you've done some travelling, where would you recommend taking a trip to? I haven't really done any travelling. So when I was younger, we always used to holiday in France. We used to go on camping holidays in France. Um, and then as part of those camping holidays to France, we'd occasionally nip to Luxembourg, nip to Switzerland. Um, I've been on a skiing holiday to Italy when I was like... Oh, the majority of my travelling has happened when I was like of school age and on holiday with my parents. In more recent years, um, I spent a, like a bit of time in Ireland. I've got friends in Ireland. Um, 
and been to weddings there and then been to visit there and stuff like that but i've not been to like any of the the bigger places in ireland that's just david on the hairdryer so i've never been to dublin or belfast or anything like that i've been to um longford and um uh donegal and uh like the smaller place sligo um mullingar places like that in ireland because that's where i've got friends um i'd love to do more of ireland because i always have such a lovely time on there last year david and i went on our um honeymoon and we went to norway which was amazing um but yeah apart from that i've not been to america i've not been to asia i have been to africa i went to morocco um to agadir that was when i was on a cruise but yeah where would i i would always recommend norway just because it's beautiful and yeah it was just amazing it was just amazing to look at like yeah absolutely gorgeous um and ireland because i always have such a lovely time and i really really like club orange the drink they do there so uh what would your ideal 48 hours look like a little bit like this weekend if i'm being honest so a lot of reading a daytime bath i'll, I'll never turn down a daytime bath some delicious food which i'm going to be having today tomorrow and um on sunday a bit of family time i don't want to spend like my whole time with them but like i'm going to my sister's for lunch today so that'll be nice a walk i always like a walk um maybe a trip to a restaurant would be nice as well like i quite like a trip to a restaurant and then i'm seeing my friend and her parents tomorrow we all have a lovely time together board games so yeah if i'm being honest like i'm quite a low-key girl but that sort of thing would would how my ideal 48 hours would would look like lauren your wallpaper where is it from the one behind you in your latest the stripes well i think you mean this one it's from eleanor boma which is also where this uh, t-shirt uh, where this cushion's from you get a few things from eleanor boma oh and some artwork but i'm not going to move the camera because it's all lovely and sorted um sadly this we got this just as it was going out in fact i might even be as bold as to say i think we got the last two rolls because it came off the website afterwards so i'm so glad we only decided to do this little section rather than try and do the whole room so we've got two wallpapers in here we've got this one which is behind the sofa when we've got the winter set up when we've got the summer set up the table goes here but yeah it was my cousin laura's idea she's got wonderful sight um because i was thinking i wanted that on all of the walls but the yellow that we've got on the other walls just complements this perfectly. And it is great. And every time I'm in it, it just makes me so happy. So yeah, Eleanor Boma, sadly not there anymore. But um, they've got some other great wallpapers. But not cheap. I also got it in the sale. So I think it was like £120 a roll. Um, but I think I got it for £60 a roll. Plus there was, I think I had a 20% off voucher. And we needed two rolls for that. Sadly, we only just needed two rolls. Because literally we needed to do like this bit and a tiny little slither at that end as well that my dad was frustrated about but Eleanor Boma go over there and check it out oh and then this lovely person says also you're awesome my favorite booktuber thank you do you ever have body confidence blips how do you overcome them if you do well yeah I think everyone's normal uh, everyone's normal I think it's normal to feel like that isn't it um I've worked very hard um to I spent years and years and years punishing myself for the way that my body looked when my body was never going to look the way that I thought it needed to because it's just not it's just not going to happen it was just not going to happen and I was so mean to myself and so just so to me I would never have spoke like I would never have said what I was thinking to myself to other people so I was just like and I thought something's got to change I can't keep starving myself doing exercise i'm not enjoying and for what <laughs> like what is this all for because it wasn't for health reasons i wasn't losing weight to make myself a bit healthier or something or like changing my food because i wanted to be healthy in fact what i was doing was probably extremely extremely dangerous and unhealthy like i don't remember any health uh, journals anywhere ever saying just eat a boiled egg in a day because that's what i was doing when i was at university thinking that's what that, that's what i needed to do and this was sort of perpetuated, I guess, by people around me. In the set, like, I'm not putting the blame on any particular person, but like I know, having had a big friendship group of girls, like since I've been younger, and having a sister and a mum and a nan, who everyone's like, lose weight, lose weight, we've got to lose weight, you've got to lose weight, and like that being the importantest thing in the world, like looking slim, and someone saying to you, have you lost weight, and being like, hmm. Um, and I just thought something's got to change it. So I thought, well, what about if I just 
start thinking about my body differently and it all happened around my 30th birthday and I think you need that sort of age on your side I mean I hope nowadays people are thinking about this younger I really really hope it is and I think it's definitely more out there that you can love your body whatever size you are and I remember hearing one of um one of the Irish girls who um, who worked over here, her saying, I really love my body. Now she was a slim figure, but I remember thinking, oh my God, I wish I could say that about myself. And then I did start feeling that about myself because of a variety of books and things that I'd read. Um, I got rid of a lot of uh, stuff that I was following on social media and started following some more body positivity people and things like that. Um, and yeah, but I think it's work. It's not overnight. And like I said, yeah, I do have blips, but I never think those unkind things that I used to think to myself. Um, if I do, th yeah, well, I mean, it happens so rarely for me, I think because I've just done all the hard work. And if I hear other people talking about their bodies and stuff like that, I'm the first to be like, don't say that. You are amazing. Like. And often, because a lot of people I know are mothers, be like, oh, I've got this tummy or I've got this. And I'm like, guys, <laughs> you have given birth to children. Give your body a day off. You are amazing as you are. So, yeah, it, um, it does happen. But I think you've just got to pick yourself up and just give yourself a good talking to. Um, does anyone in your family watch your videos? No, like I said, I don't, I don't think so. I think David's mum does. So if David's mum's watching, hi. Um, but yeah, I don't think anyone else does because I think they, um, unless they're in them. I know my sister watches the ones that she's in. But uh, yeah. If you are a member of my family and you're watching this, text me to say I'm watching this vi video. Um, please ask David to update his movie reviews. They are my favourites. Oh, and then this person said skirt was necessary. David, have you not been updating your movie reviews? No, I haven't. I mean, bearing in mind, we haven't really watched much lately, but I've got a couple that I need People to love that. David has been having thinkings of starting back his YouTube channel. Very early thinkings. There's no plans in place. I'm ready for my questions now. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if they're all your questions. Have I missed out on any? Want to join, do you want to join in for some? I mean, if I can, I'll sit here. What time me. is it? It's quarter, nearly quarter two, so we've Oh, I mean, they're not going to be ready at they're not be ready 12, ready are they? There we go. Oh, here we go. This is about you, David. How do you think being with David has influenced your booktube or reading? If anything, I'm probably the master behind it, I think. Well, I think I'm very fortunate that I've got a partner who literally just lets me read all the time, because that you do just do that. Um, often when I'm reading... Well, I mean, this year, you've been reading. I've been I've reading been a lot, reading. haven't I? David's I'm been, on my fourth book. David's, on, David's almost finished his fourth book of the year, which is he, his pledge at the top of the year was to read a book a, a, book a month. Um, and it looks as though that, well, that's definitely on track, let's say. So yeah. more recently, David's been reading. Um, other stuff you do, you play computer games with your headphones on if I'm reading. Yeah, I'll do whatever it needs to help TikToks. make your, your life better. I film you. I take photos of you. <laughs> he does. He does everything. No, but the question was, how do you think being with David has influenced your booktube or reading? Also, I don't think booktube would have happened if I hadn't have been with David because he was the person who showed me how to video edit. I mean, it was the bare basics. Yeah, yeah. But he showed me what he knew. And I, I borrowed a camera. And he from borrowed my a camera job, from his previous I? job oh that I was God, able to the film camera. on. Camera. I know it still was all right though, but it was like yeah. a little, honestly, it was like a little matchbox. Mm. Um. So yeah, so booktube wouldn't have happened. And David's very much like, I mean, if you think I believe I can do everything, you want to hear David talk about me because he believes I can do like, I think I can do anything. But David really believes I can do anything, don't you, David? Okay. Apart from uh, fill the dishwasher. <laughs> The only thing. I know. Everyone, everyone's, Everything everyone's else. got their bugs to bear. Everyone has their weaknesses and mine is dishwashers. <laughs> dishwasher. There we go. Um, are you reading the short list of non-fiction? I was surprised by how fast the list came out. I was surprised by how fast the list came out. So this is referring to the Women's Prize for Non-Fiction, which is a new prize this year. Um, I've got one of the books here that was on the long list, Young Queens by Leah Redmond Chang. Um, I wish they'd put the lists out separately because then I would have had more of a go of giving the non-fiction list long list or even the short list a go um, because my priority is the fiction list because fiction is always my priority. I do own Code Dependent, which I also think you might be interested in, David. Yeah. And I've got out on audio at the moment Doppelganger. So I think I might give those two a go. But yeah, I don't, I don't know because the hard work I'm, I'm referencing here because I've got two, four five of the women's prize for fiction books there so that that's the um that's the priority would you like to own a house one day or are you happy renting um we would like to own this one day wouldn't we 
Mm -hmm. It would just be, um, I mean, we're happy renting. We're, we're really happy renting. We're lucky our, our um, land people, landlords, land, what are they called? Landlords and ladies. Landlords and ladies are very relaxed and chill and let us do all of this sort of thing um, and just sort of let us get on with it. I mean, I think they quite like having us here as well because we've, like, we've, we've decorated we're it. We're low maintenance. We're we? very low maintenance. My dad gets a call before my landlords and ladies get a call anyway and if there's anything we can do, then we do that. But yeah, we would like to own it at some point just because... It'd just be nice, wouldn't it? Just because. <laughs> yeah, it'd just be nice. Um, Favourite contestants from RuPaul's Drag Race? We haven't watched RuPaul's Drag Race. I would go as far as to say yes. since lockdown, David. Yeah. It's been a long time, but my favourite will always and forever be Brooklyn Heights. Always. That, that's never going to get toppled, I don't think. What about you? How weird that question come up? I'd probably say Lawrence Cheney, because when I was oh, looking yeah. at TikTok last night, uh, the UK Huns video just popped up on my timeline. Yeah, Lawrence Cheney. And I Cheney watched it all and I forgot how good that UK Huns performance was. It was amazing. Great answer. Uh, when will you be reading the Anne of Green Gables series? That's another series I could read this year. Oh, I hope soon. I um, I love Anne of Green Gables, and we reread it. I reread it last year. Was it for Patreon Book Club that I read it? I think it was. We had a lovely time. Yeah, I need to. I've got the whole series. David's sister bought me the beautiful series of them. I'm looking at them now. That's another series I need to read this year. Um, when will we get more cleaning videos? <laughs> soon i hope there's always a little bit of cleaning in the friday reading vlogs if you'd like to check those out friday reading vlogs is where it's at guys that's where you're going to get your cleaning your books your um baking classical music poetry david's in them um yeah that's where you need to go but yeah sp specific cleaning videos i was I, and one of the other um live show ideas i had was um to do a clean live show clean along clean along um but yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, this is an important one, David, and one you can answer. Mini eggs or cream eggs? Mini eggs. Mini eggs always. I actually it's, don't like cream eggs. I, I like cream eggs, but yeah, I like... I mean, of course you do. They're just pure sugar in chocolate. How do you? Um, I don't like cream eggs at all. I feel like it's quite an unpopular opinion, actually, because people go mad. I mean, you can get cream egg stuff all year round, but when you used to just be able to get them for... Maybe I did used to like them. I, are they available? I don't think they are available all year round. I think they are. I don't think cream eggs Answers are. in the comments, please. Um, could you tell us your top five favourite cookbooks? The Green Roasting Tin, at number one, for definite. What one do we... Oh, at the moment... I mean, at the moment, the Sweet Roasting Tin, because I'm going mm. through that and baking from that. That's lovely. Um, I really like uh, Jamie Oliver's 15-Minute Meals. Yeah, if you're a meat or fish eater, then great, good for you. The only thing I will say about it is that we have, re we have absolutely cooked to death the vegetarian stuff out there but mm. it's a very like ignore the fact that they're supposed to be done in 15 minutes do not worry about that but it's a great great simple cookbook isn't it yeah to be cooking from yeah. so i would highly recommend that um what else we've had some nice stuff east. we haven't made much but the um the mowgli 30 minute we've had some nice oh yeah the out. mowgli books are lovely to look at and the 30 minute yeah and there's a vegetarian mm. one as well there's a new book by nisha katona as well called bold which i really want um east by mira sodhar that's a very very good book um that's all vegetarian and vegan stuff uh like from all sorts of, like india to japan gorgeous 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 but yeah i think probably the green roasting tin is, is number one but yeah, maybe I should do a, a, a video about that, you know? Mm -hmm. Maybe I should. Uh, what was your favourite Christmas read of 2023? Um, it was the last in the Cancelay Chronicle series, All Change, um, which whilst isn't a Christmas book, it is set over Christmas. It's about all of the Cancelay, um brothers and their children and all of that returning to um, the, the house that the, the parents, uh, the Brig and the, the Duchy owned. Um, and, it, and yeah, it's all sort of unfolds over Christmas, so I would go as far as that. What about you, David? You only read one, didn't you? Yeah. What was it? Christmas Pill. Yeah, which I didn't think was that yeah, good, actually. Yeah, it was all right. It was like, I think the appeal was so good. Yeah. I just think it's it's going to be impossible to top. But uh, I think if you'd have read the, read the Christmas Appeal first... You would have felt differently. You might have felt it. a bit differently. Uh, somebody asked, what happened with your Spotify playlist? I really enjoyed the themes for the month. That's very kind, thank you. Um, it, as is always the case, I got a bit much for me. Um, and I stopped doing it. But yeah, I did enjoy doing it. But it was quite time... I had to invest quite a lot of time into it and I didn't always get time to do it. Um, this is when I say things like this and I'm like, oh, maybe I will do it again. But the truth is, is that I don't think I will do it again. But yeah, I'm glad you had such a nice time enjoying them. Maybe, David, you could take that over. Um, 
Silly question, it's the end of March, are you sick of wearing green? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm loving the outfit, so yeah, this is relating back to my, um, where are you going? Um, I just feel a little bit weird, just sitting there not really saying much. No, sit there, you're not being weird, sit there, it's nice. All right. He's going to look at his phone. I'll look at my phone until I'm required. Until you're required. Um, I, yeah, so the, the, the fashion challenge I'm doing, I did a sort of additional one because of it was March and it was St. Patrick's Day and I was taking part in the Irish Readathon and the Women's Prize for Colour, uh, the Women's Prize for Fiction Colours are, are green as well. I was like, I'm going to wear green every day in March. And I have, apart from yesterday, which was our choir show and our choir colours are purple. So, yeah, I am getting, I'm not getting bored of wearing green because I really like green and I think it goes nice with my hair. But, <coughs> I've done all that I can with all of my green clothes. Um, I'm looking forward to, to get, but I'll be wearing green through, for the rest of the year as well, like, but I'm looking forward to reading some more. But yeah, I'm not sick of wearing green, but thank you for noticing. Uh, what inspired you to start a YouTube channel? Oh, well, I touched on this earlier. So I, um, I've always been a voracious reader um, and uh, previously I always got my sort of book recommendations from um, the Rich and Judy book club or if a, sometimes I'd look at lists of films that were coming out that year that had been books before and and get those out if I found an author I loved I would normally um, just read all of their back back list but once I remember googling uh, what should I read next blog or something and this page from the book people who um, <clears throat> were a book uh, a website where, which sold books I don't think they actually trade anymore and they had a page of 10 booktubers um one was Sana one was Jean and I watched a few of their videos where they were talking about books or the books that they'd been sent from the book people and I was like oh my god what is this corner of the internet followed by oh my god I could do this and David was working as an IT technician in a school at that time weren't you David mm -hmm. and had like a few bits of tech didn't you a tiny little camera yeah and had done a little bit of video editing is that fair to say but not much. No, I mean, not his job is well, now video oh producer. Oh God, like, 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 yeah, literally. But I you remember. knew what to do, didn't you? Yes. Because yeah. I, like, I didn't. So he borrowed a, like, literally, like, I watched this video on, like, the weekend, and then by the Wednesday, I had filmed what I said was a book haul, but was actually a TBR, <laughs> um, because I didn't really know what's going she on. She didn't I will, know. I'll link it down below. I've still got it up there. Um, and yeah, and then I just sort of, and, and for the first, like, if you... Uh, I mean, it was different then. There was a lot less booktubers. There was still a lot, but there was a lot less. And I would say for the first sort of year, two years, you're just sort of like talking at, to, well, to begin with, about seven people. Um, but then you'd get up to sort of like 60 and things like that. And then someone might shout out your channel and then you might get noticed by like a, a bigger booktuber and then you might become friends with people and stuff like that. So that would happen like when you'd sort of be like, oh my God, I've gone from like, 182 subscribers to like 300 what's happened mm. and then like later on you'd be like i've gone from like 1600 subscribers to just under 2000 what's happened and then you'd find out that somebody else had shouted you out and then they'd go and do that so yeah, yeah that's a nice way to find to find this out but i'm always interested so please use this as an opportunity to let me know down below where you found me out for how you found me um and how long you've been watching what wallpaper what wallpaper that's always an interesting one isn't it because we had the mickey mouse wallpaper in the first flat Mm. Um, do you see yourself having undyed hair? Other colours on uh, hair colours on the wish list. I don't see myself having undyed hair. I mean, maybe eventually, but I, I like having dyed hair, and it makes me feel nice. Um, I'm actually due to have my roots done because um, I got rid of the blonde, but because the blonde is still under here, um, this is sort of like gingery blonde. So I'm going to have um, it will be going red again on Friday. Are you still enjoying YouTube? Asking because of uh, last Vlogmas and how it affected you. Yeah, I still absolutely love it. I would go as far as to say I love it, like, I've loved it consistently throughout. And I still get as much of a thrill of putting a video out now as I did, like, back in the 60 subscribers days. Because I just love the interaction of it and all. What happened with Vlogmas is that Vlogmas is a really taxing time of year at a taxing time of year. So putting out a video every single day as well as doing a full-time job, as well as um, it being deep darkest winter where it's really, really cold, as well as having wanting to enjoy that time of year because it's your favorite time of year, as well as interacting with your family and stuff like that, like every year, it just never happens for me. I think I've, I think I've managed it once, like the whole time, and that might even have been during lockdown. It was, because you did it as well, oh God, and we couldn't so believe hard. that we got how much we got we done. We created 48 different videos. Videos over in the period of a month. Like, that's amazing. where essentially we couldn't yeah. do anything. So, yeah. 
I, I've always really enjoyed doing it and I watch it back fondly, but the reality is, is it's so hard to do. Mm. And you're losing sleep because you're spending so much time doing it. And yeah, you're just, you're yeah. just not you're be the best version of yourself. So no Vlogmas this year. Because yeah. it is our favourite time of year. It is our, the most wonderful time of the year for us. Mm. No Vlogmas this year, but Christmas content when the Vlogmas would be. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, are you happy? What would you change in your life if you're given the chance? I'm very happy. David, you happy? I'm very happy. What would you change, given the chance, in your life? What would I change? I'll tell you what I would change about myself, is I'd like a bit more get up and go. Because yeah. at the weekends we're like, lay in bed. But I think on, on the days when I've sort of got up and gone for a walk, or got up and, like when we've been to a class in the morning or something like that, or gone and done the yeah. shopping, I feel so accomplished. But the, those days are so few and far between because the reality is we're lazy. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think like that's an entirely bad thing, but I would like to have a bit more get up and go and just to be like, right, let's do this today. Mm. So that's what I changed about myself. I would like to, to be- I would like to be more lazy. <laughs> I would like to be potentially a bit more productive in like when I'm sitting there and you're doing your podcast or doing your YouTube or editing, which you are, or like, I just feel like maybe I should do something a bit more productive. Okay. Like, because there's always things that I, that there's things that I want to learn that would help me in my, like, working life. Not that it's yeah. all about that, but like, so there's stuff like, a long time ago, I started to learn about motion designing, and it was really interesting, I enjoyed it, but then I just stopped. Yeah. And, um, and it's something that I really want to, because it will benefit me, and then if it, at some point it could maybe transfer over to benefiting you. I would like that. And I like and things to benefit like me. It, it's, it's something that I, I, but yeah, it's just having that energy and instead of just sitting there playing, because I, I, like, I enjoy playing video games and I will always play video games, but maybe... David spends a lot of time on your phone as well. I, think I do spend a say. lot of time on my phone. I'm, as much, I, I think, I'm pretty good with my phone. Yes, you're, you're much better. If I go to other people's houses and stuff, I don't even take my phone out of my bag because I think I'm there to see them and I want to just be in the moment. When I'm home, I'm, I feel like I'm worse. And when I'm in the car, I'm particularly bad, which is bad because David is driving. So sometimes I'm just on mm. my phone. But, but, but also sometimes you're doing yeah. like, if I'm on channel. my phone, I'm very, so like David does a lot of scrolling and scrolling into the night, but yeah. I don't scroll really, do I? I think I need to do no, this on Instagram. No, you definitely I'll don't. have a little look at everything, but I'm not, I'm not scrolling because I've got nothing else to do. So no. I guess in terms of get up and go there, I do have a little bit of stuff, but yeah. My yeah. problem is that for one at work, I was asked to look into some TikTok trends. Yeah. And I did. And it was and, very useful, wasn't it? And it was very useful, but then I just started enjoying what yeah, and I don't up. want you to. I don't want that no. to take it away from you because I know that you being on TikTok, you're as engaged in that as I am when I'm reading. So mm. the different, like, but 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 whereas think, whereas it was it was for work and pleasure, it's now very much I'm watching it for pleasure. Oh, okay. And if like something seen, comes like, up for work, if, if something pops up for work, I'll save it. As the same on my Instagram reels. Like if something pops up that I think, oh, I can talk about that at work or that's something we might be useful, then I'll save it. But I'm definitely also but I think like my algorithm is changing slightly. Not always, because I don't I don't look watch my followers. I just have random stuff come up, and obviously, and then when you start to watch videos of a certain type, you start obviously you know algorithms, and you know um, you know algorithms. that might be how you found me algorithms. Yeah. And um, yeah, so maybe try and be a bit more productive. Should we go to my sisters? We're supposed to be there at twelve, aren't we? What time is it now? It's twelve. Yeah, maybe I'll continue this. Yeah, I think maybe I should. Because I've still got lots of more questions to answer. All right, see you in a bit, bye. You're in. Well, hello, welcome back to the Q&A. She's got a whole new fringe. A whole new fringe. And we're in a different location. And we're in a different location and the sofa's changed. Um, we didn't continue the Q&A after we got back from my sisters. So here we are to continue the Q&A. A week later. A week later. Over a week later? Over a week later. Over I think it was later. on Good Friday. Oh my God, it was. Wow. Um, and I also said in that video, um, I'm looking forward to not wearing green anymore. Oh, <laughs> got green. This is actually a green top I didn't wear in March though. So it was a waste of opportunity. I love this green top. It reminds me of our honeymoon. 
Because yes, yeah. I wore it on our honeymoon at the first stop we went to. Right, continue with the questions. Here we go. How do you keep a track of your reading apart from Instagram? Story graph, spreadsheets, question mark. Um, I've got a notebook. I get myself a new notebook at the beginning of every year. David said, I'll get you a notebook for Christmas and then you can use that as your reading journal. And you didn't do it, did you? You were de devastated that you forgot. I was devastated. I um, forgot. So I went to Sainsbury's. The last few years they've been from Habitat. I made sure I get you one in this year. In Sainsbury's. And then the years before they've been from Typo. Um, and yeah, I log all of my reading in there. It's sort of like a Bible, really, for the YouTube channel. So it has video ideas, video schedules, um, and books that I might want to read, um, notes from my videos and stuff like that. So yeah, I keep it all in there and I log it all on Instagram um, as an Instagram story and then I put it into highlights. David, how do you keep track of your reading? You take a photo of it every time I put Yeah, book. I put it on Instagram and I write it in the diary, Yeah. So in the notebook. So I'm, can, I'm looking after all of that stuff there. Yeah. Uh, Favourite cruelty-free makeup and face products, Happy Easter. Uh, David, any favourite cruelty-free face? Uh, uh, well, face? my um, my essence bought stuff is cruelty-free, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, that fragrance that fragrances. is. Fragrances. Um, so first of all, I will say Skin and Me has completely revolutionised my skin regime, which is cruelty-free. Um, and vegan I believe um, and yeah I got involved with that because I'd seen it sort of Instagram targeted to me and then as is the joy with some of these things turns out it's actually really good and my skin is better in better nick than it's been for a really long time so very happy with that I've got an affiliate link down for that if, if you'd like to go and try it out you get a sort of it's called a daily dose so it's made out of infinitely recyclable aluminium which I also enjoy um, and you put a treatment on every day um, of the evening and then in the morning you put on your moisturizer and stuff as normal and um, i also use their moisturizer because it's got some sort of like the, the moisturizer itself is lovely um, and i use their spf and i use their cleanser you don't have to you just have the daily doser i started off with just the daily doser um and then i got sent a, a um a tester of their new morning serum um, and the bottle that the tester came in the morning serum did not come out of the pipette and I thought oh hopefully they would have worked this out by the time they send out the new stuff they haven't I got the first one I've cancelled the, the the serum because it just doesn't come out of the pipette so it's not all good news I didn't like the serum <laughs> but uh, the daily doser and everything else I think is really good and favorite cruelty free makeup I think I would say Fenty Beauty which is Rihanna's beauty brand um, her foundation is what I've got on today, David. And don't I look lovely? You always look and lovely. don't I deserve the best? What's that from? Gaston. Gaston. So yeah, I would say that. Um, do you think you'll try embroidery as a branch out from cross-stitch, David? No, I absolutely <laughs> love doing cross-stitching. No. No, I'm happy with my cross stitch. I feel like I would, well, David actually bought me an embroidery kit without realising the sixth musical thing yeah. he bought me is an embroidery kit. And I did settle down to do it one night and it, I sort of felt a bit overwhelmed by the whole thing because I've just been so used to doing you cross stitch. I need some YouTube videos. I need some you? YouTube videos and I need a bit of time. And I think we were watching a film at the time so I couldn't be like, yeah. stop the film, let me watch these videos. Um, so yeah, I need to spend a bit of time. Because I think, that. isn't that more you're almost on your own with it? Like, you're not really following a pattern quite. Well, the there's same yeah, as a there's like a method to do it, but I think there's more. There's not a grid like there no, is on cross stitch. So there's more. Grid. There's I more need, space for error. I, I need suppose. to be told where to go and what to do when it comes to things like that. <laughs> um, where are some places you and David would love to travel to? Well, I sort of touched on this earlier, but where would you like to? T where, where would you like to travel to? Um, well, this is somewhere Lauren doesn't want to go, but I want to go to New Orleans. In yeah. America. Yeah. Um, I'd like to do a little yeah. bit more of Scotland. Yeah. Yeah, I'd I think like I think as as yeah, as 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 a as a solo traveller, I would like to try and do Walt Disney World one more time, but I don't think I ever will. I've got no interest in no. that. No, and I would like to go to New Orleans. So I don't like part of me thinks do do I want to experience Vegas once in my life? Oh god. I know you don't. This is no. literally like my yeah. worst ideas of places to go. Yeah, but as together, like I want to go back to Norway. There's lots of Norway that we need to explore still. Yeah, we'd like to do a bit of Sweden, uh, yeah. Iceland, Scotland. We're keen. We've always said that we want to do a proper like travel of like Scotland and Ireland. Like we've been to Ireland, but we've never done it properly. We've we've been there for like weddings and stuff, haven't we? Yeah, and um, within those trips, we've sort of been to a few places. Yeah, there, but yeah, I'd like but, to but, go. But, and... we, but we've always there. We're never there to like explore no. and do like touristy stuff. 
Like, uh, I'd like to go back to like Edinburgh and do like a proper weekend of tourists because we did like almost like a day yeah. there, didn't we? We didn't I'd really like to go do to Glasgow. Much. Sure, David's been to Glasgow a couple of times. And but again, it's only for, like, for restaurants. It's nice, yeah, but I've only been there for work, so literally, yeah. I've gone out to like a restaurant and maybe a pub, and that's it. But I'm very, it. very keen. We have booked a holiday for next year. It's David's. Um, mm. It's David's fortieth next year, and we're going to go back to Norway. Yeah. Wee! Um, but. I would like, I think my next sort of thing I would like to do is go to Scotland, is yeah. go to Skye or Orkney or something like yeah. that. I'm very keen to do that. And we want to do Iceland as well, don't yeah. we? Yeah, we think like we would to... do that as a cruise as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, those are some places. Uh, what's your favourite season and why? Uh, my favourite season is, I'll be, I think it's winter. I think it's winter because I don't mind the cold. I don't mind wrapping it up. Yeah. My birthday's in winter. Christmas is in winter. I like short days and I like being cosy and I like everything that winter brings. I like the winter food. Yeah. Yeah. So I would go. So I think I always used to say autumn, but I actually think it is winter. Yeah. Winter's for me. Oh, is it? Yeah. Very closely followed by autumn because I do like autumn is stuff. lovely and there's yeah. sort of like. Especially now that thanks to good old climate change, it's quite warm. Like it's not too bad. That's is the reason it? that I don't like autumn as much. No, anymore, I mean. Because it is as warm. Like, that's why I like winter more because I like it. Cold. Yeah, we do like heat cold. Don't we, we do, don't we, David? We're just those sort of people. But only when we're allowed to have the cold. heating on in here. Yeah, uh, David. What job do you do? I am a video producer for Cancer Research, so I film lots of things. Which is for, a charity in the UK. Is, which is um, the UK's biggest cancer charity. Sorry, David. The UK's biggest. Yeah, don't over undersell us. Um, yeah, and so I do. I am a video producer, so I help create videos from start to finish, and I do lots of stuff for show, social um, stuff, and do lots of stuff for like YouTube, and I think a couple of our bits have been used for TV for like ad campaigns and stuff. But yeah, I go. Also, I film anything and everything that's to do with cancer research, whether it be researchers, fundraising, um, cancer survivors, cancer survivors. Like, promo stuff. Oh my god, promo stuff, like stuff to do with the shops, loads of stuff. I love my job. It's hard work. It's very nice that you but love it's, your job so it's much. It's a very rewarding job. Done. Well done. Um, and I am a, the, the job title is pathway coordinator, but th th that doesn't really mean too much to people outside of the NHS. So it's sort of like an office manager role. Um, and I look after a team of diabetes, doctors and nurses and junior doctors uh, running sort of like day-to-day -day management of the centre, as well as um, speaking with patients, liaising with patients about their medications, queries, appointments. Um, there's a lot of admin stuff in there, like typing and diary management and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a big sort of, managing everyone's lives job um and i've been doing that for a long long time and i don't know and i right david question oh. would you ever consider having any more pets other than cats no i don't think so not any no like at some point i remember when we first oh like, actually while we say this i'm just gonna go and check that i've closed the, uh, the bedroom window continue talking about okay. pets. so i as a child i was a dog man and and we had a dog as a family growing up um, and then obviously when we got with Lauren, um, uh, we lost my dog like years before I met Lauren. But Lauren had two. Lauren had a cat um, with her mum and dad, and uh, Tigger who was very cute. He was very noisy and a bit deaf, but he was very cute. And, uh, and then he sadly died. Um, and then we moved in, and we was kind of we we kind of wanted a, a pet. Oh, we're a cat quite soon, didn't we? I never thought I'd want one. We looked one. after Tigger for a week, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. And it was lovely. Yeah. And then we got Minnie. Absolutely fell in love with her, even though she was a bit nasty. A bit, a bit cheeky. She was a bit cheeky. Um, yeah. And then, like, sadly, obviously, Minnie had to be had to go to the big farm um, last year. Last June, yeah. Was it last June? Just yes, it was we last June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just before we went on our honeymoon. Yeah, and we kind of thought we would have a bit of a bigger. We almost thought we would have a, like a year break, didn't we, from not having a cat? And then we then we lasted the summer, and it was like, no, we really miss having a cat. So we went and got Daphne. So I don't think we'll have any other pets. No. Like I, I thought one point is that maybe I would like a dog at some point in my life, like a small dog here. But I just love having a cat. Yeah. That's just good fun. And um, I wouldn't ever have any other animals. No. Um, small animals have never really been my bag. I had um, guinea pigs as a child. Yeah. Um, and my sister had a hamster. But yeah, they don't sort of do... I, I just love cats so much. And in particular, yeah. our cat Daphne. Yeah. Um, and 
I mean, I don't think Daphne would mind if we got another cat. When we got Minnie, they were very clear that Minnie had to be the only cat that was at home and stuff mm. like that. But I just don't feel like we need another no. cat. Um, and yeah, I'm not much of a dog person, um, which is an unpopular opinion. But um, I've never been around dogs. And no. some of the experiences I've had with dogs haven't been great. So yeah, I'm just not much of a, no, much of a dog person, which is fine. Some people... Don't yeah. like other No, I, no I never thought I'd be a cat person, but as soon yeah. as like we got Minnie... So you'd never had a cat when you were a child? No. So the first cat you ever really had No, like, because Dad, Dad... Oh yeah, he doesn't My, like my dad actually hates cats because they poo in his garden. This cat doesn't, because she this doesn't go doesn't, out. This cat doesn't, because she, she's, she's an indoor cat, so... Yeah. Uh, Daphne's been much more of a hit with the um, extended family than Minnie ever was, sadly. <laughs> because Daphne is... Um, Very much, playful, Much yeah. more playful, much more doesn't want to yeah. bite and hit every... She doesn't want to bite people. Uh, she doesn't want to hit everybody fun. and hiss at people. No. I don't think I've ever heard Daphne hiss. No, I haven't. Oh, well done, Daphne. Right, next question. Um, where are your glasses from? They're always so trendy. Uh, mine are from Vision Express. Uh, these are... Oh, guys, they're Armani. Um, but I think I just liked the lighter frames. I don't know where my red ones are from. From Vision Express. I think the red ones might be menswear ones as well, because I sort of like the bigger ones on my face. Where are yours? Mine are also Vision Express, but they're not funky. Like I like Where are them. They from? But... What's the brand? Oh, well, I, I think they're oh. actually just like Vision Express ones. Oh, there but... we go. Oh no, Scene, which I think that might be their in-brand oh, one. There we go. Um, if you would sell merchandise, how would they look? P.S. I would one hundred percent buy it. Um... Like this. <laughs> yeah, picture of me and David <laughs> saying love wins underneath yeah. it. I don't feel like I'm creative enough to create any merchandise. Yeah, I just don't know. I guess if I was to make merchandise, I would want it to be something I would wear. And I quite like t-shirts that have like a little embroidered something here. I don't like a big slogan t-shirt so much. No. Um, so I quite like a subtle thing. So if you're a fan of something and you've got like this little subtle nod to it, it's a bit like, oh yeah, Would you like to create your own cross stitch kit? Oh yeah, that would be quite nice, yeah. But like of books or something, but it's again. Always, always comes back to cross stitch. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if I would do any merchandise. Just coincidentally, just to mention though, um, I do do a podcast, an All About the Archers podcast, where we've just launched some and merch. That does have merch. Um, and that does have merch, uh, which is notebooks and mugs and um, t-shirts -shirts and hoodies and stuff. So that's only available for the Patreons at the moment, but it will be going out to everyone else. So yeah, I, I have got some merch, but it's very niche merch, if you like, <laughs> um, All About the Archers. Um... Please tell me how you eco-friendly clean your oven. The lemons in a bowl of water won't work. Well, I'm, I'm at the beginning of my green cleaning career. Um, <laughs> but what I have been doing, and it isn't green, but it is environmentally neutral, is that I use something called the pink stuff, which is like a mildly abrasive... Um, a paste. Paste, cleaning paste. And it does the, the oven beautifully. So it's not... In wholly natural uh, it comes in a plastic pot for instance but it is uh, environmentally neutral and it won't um, upset the waterways and yeah it does an amazing job it does an amazing job oven. everywhere well, everywhere but in the oven in particular with a scrub daddy which mm. again is made of plastic um, but yeah more more as I get it more as I get it uh, besides the women's prize any other book prizes you're interested in Dave and I just hey. had conversations. This is very have. exciting. So for the Books of My Bag um, Indie Prize this year, Indie Bookshop Prize, I just can't get comfy, David. Piss off. Um, me? No, not you. Um, they sent me the short list of all the book of all the um, of all the books that were up for the prize last year. There's a fiction category, a non-fiction category, a children's category, and a, pi a picture book category. And um, that was lovely. And they're sending them to me again this year because I'm working with Books in My Bag for the Independent Bookshop Week Cozy Reading Night. More on that later. Uh, not in this video, later. Um, <laughs> and uh, David and I have decided that between us, we're going to read one of the shortlists. We haven't decided what the shortlists are. We're going to decide because we want it to work for both of us. I don't want David to slog through free picture, uh, free fiction books that he'd never free enjoyed. Picture books. <laughs> free picture books. You could slog through those. <laughs> so yeah, so between us, we're going to be reading the shortlist of one of the categories in the Books in My Bag uh, reading yeah. awards. So that's exciting, isn't it? It is. I've never read any. I am, because I've never done any kind of books. Well, you always sort of say to me, you like how into the Women's Prize I get and yeah. the long list and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, yeah, this we'll way we can try. share it together. So Excellent. that will be, I think the long list comes out sort of towards the end of April. So keep nice. an eye out for that. But there'll be a video and a vlog of us doing that as well. 
Uh, now you're baking every week, what's the one thing you've always wanted to try to bake? Well, it's been happening. The whole reason I started this, well, mainly I started it because I wanted to learn how to bake, but also I knew that in the, um, the sweet roasting tin baking book that I've been using, there was savoury muffins. Don't you eat those, Dappy. <laughs> You have to do this to sort of... She's so cute. She's Deppy. so silly. Come on, that's it. Well, well done. done. Um, savoury muffins is what I've been really looking forward to. Oh. And this weekend, I've made two batches of savoury muffins. I've made a cheddar, so basil nice. and black cracked black pepper ones, which were amazing. And then yesterday, because it was my cousin Laura's birthday, I made goats, cheese, fig and basil. And they were also they were. delicious. I didn't think I'd like them, but they were well nice. So yeah, so that's what I've been desperate to make. I'm also interested, there's a bread section as well. I've never been particularly good at making bread. And there's sort of like cakes are not what, so I've made, we've, we've worked our way through. The first chapter was tray bakes. I know there's a loaf tin section in there. Yeah, because yeah, I've already made, made one, there. haven't I? The muffins, we're coming to the end of the muffin section. And I know there's a bread section. I also think there's like a celebration section. Like so a, they're like uh, brownies as well, I think. Oh yeah, maybe. And I'm not a big brownie lover, so. But yeah. This guy. The um, the I was very, I'm very, very excited oh, about the savoury muffins, yeah. and so far they've been exceeded our they expectations, were both haven't they? Delicious. So there we go. Uh, any tips for going vegetarian? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say don't stress yourself out about it. Just do it like ease into it the way i eased into it was that i went from eating meat to being a pescatarian for a year so i was eating fish um and then i became a vegetarian after that um what i would say is that you could start by doing what david does and that's eating vegetarian in at home um because you eat vegetarian here because i only cook yep. vegetarian and then if he goes out for dinner or something like that he'll have meat or if he goes to someone else's house um, he'll have meat there so that's another way you could do it yeah um find recipes that you like and adapt them to make them vegetarian so don't start just eating loads of vegetable curries even though you've never done that mm -hmm. before so like if you like sausage mash and beans start swapping those out for uh, vegetarians we love that we do love sausage yeah. mash and beans like totally old. um i would oh. also say buy the green roasting tin <laughs> the cookbook the green roasting tin <clears throat> which has been mentioned many times in this video already oh, it yeah. is amazing so it's delicious. so delicious and it's so easy for cooking as well yeah um and you will find many many things in there and really big crowd pleasers as well yeah. like whenever we have people around we always cook from the green roasting tin um and everyone really really enjoys it always so yeah any tips david you've you've sort of dabbled with vegetarian like well he's a i believe I think it's either called like an in-house vegetarian or a flexitarian or yeah. something like that. So you're basically that. Like, I, I would say like seventy percent of your diet is vegetarian. Definitely. Yeah, and then yeah. if like, and even more so now that you're trying to eat more lunches at home and stuff, you're like yeah. go for like an egg sandwich rather than or an omelette. Yeah. and stuff like that. Any tips? I, I don't. Well, I mean, it did. Obviously, it definitely helps with somebody who wants to be a vegetarian more than me because. I, obviously, I wouldn't have done it otherwise, but but I was happy to support Lauren. Oh, well, I mean, when you first went, sometimes we was having meat. I was having meat while you was having vegetarian. Yeah, which feels which wild now, doesn't it? Absolutely feels wild because you'd never expect me no. to have meat for you now. And um, yeah, I, I, I just think now, especially like it would have been tougher when we first started, but now there's such good vegetarian alternatives. I I. I I can't see it being that difficult, personally. No. I think unless like you're a real like red meat carnivore eater. Yeah, there's some things you'll never get like a dupe yeah. for. Like you'll never get like a no. steak alternative. No, or... but it's like I love burgers, and there's like there's plenty of yeah. decent burger alternatives, and look, and but we've really tried to lower how much processed meat we eat. Meat, but we do like love veg, it. Like fake meat we have now. Yeah. Um, we have dinner tonight, in fact. <laughs> we've yeah, got fake we chicken have, pie. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say if you want to do it, I think as Lauren's is a great idea, like going pescatarian first and just easing into it. Yeah, or even if you just did it like at the weekend or yeah. during the week or something, just to ease yourself in and then just think, oh, before yeah. I know it. Or, just have like, or if you eat vegetarian when you go out, for instance, if you live at home with meat eaters and then you just sort of make it like, if you're going to have lunches, at like your lunch, make yourself yeah. a vegetarian lunch or make yourself or go out and have vegetarian food if you go out. Yeah. There's, there's definitely ways to ease yourself into it. What I will also say is that um, we mentioned earlier about me cooking meat for David when I became vegetarian. I would say don't do that. <laughs> if you if you no. decide you want to be vegetarian, then the people around you need to 
sort of support that. And yeah. now I never cook meat alternatives. People coming over for dinner. No, we never do, do I we? never do anything alternative. And my dad is a massive meat eater, but he will now eat the things that I'm cooking. Yeah. And, and, I, and he to likes them. Yeah. yeah. What's something around, oh no, uh, what's something you always do around the house in springtime? We rearrange the house. We do rearrange. So we've rearranged the house. We've got this little summer set up where we have the sofa in front of the bookshelves and the table over there, which is nice. It feels more like we can look at the two windows when we're sat here, which yeah. is lovely. Get a bit more light. Yeah, I don't know why. This just feels very spring. The chair's in the bay window so I can sit and enjoy and read for a bit longer mm -hmm. in there. Um, yeah. That's something we always do in springtime. Yeah. David, what's the best present you've ever received? Um, I've got two. Okay, well you go first while two. I think. Number one is this camera that you're filming this on. David <laughs> bought this for me when we, um, we'd been together a couple of years when I'd been doing the YouTube channel for a while. I'd been filming on a little tiny camera and then my phone and then David bought me this and I just never looked back. And the other one is a present from someone I work with. Oh yeah! One new for Christmas. <laughs> Completely unexpectedly, um, one of the doctors I work with bought me a long hot water bottle. And they've been, they're out and about now, but this was about six years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. And it just revolutionised my period pain in my life because it meant I could have it laying long ways across there. When I went to bed, I could sort of huddle it like this and have it there. Yeah, it was just amazing. Yeah. And completely, and like, he knew that I suffered with period pains anyway, so he sort of bought me that thinking oh yeah i've seen you with uh, like a thingy one but he bought me a long one it was just amazing yeah. the long ones are really good for backache as well because you can have them like up on your back or you can always have them like around you a bit but yeah that the christmas i opened that i couldn't put it down could i no yeah you can get them everywhere now but there we go what about best present you've ever had um one of the best presents because i'm terrible at remembering what people have bought me but what you actually bought me for our one year wedding anniversary is that is the picture of um the sam rider gig yeah from um, a, uh, a guy on Instagram called Chris, Chris Lloyd. Lloyd and what he does he specialises in he goes to gigs and he sits quite near the back which is where we were for Sam Ryder and he sits on the edge uh, on the end of the road gets a little light and he actually paints he, he paints the concert as the concert's happening and we were like kind of sat with him we was chatting to him a bit and watching him and it was incredible yeah and i like we love sam Ryder anyway like sam Ryder is one of my favorites one of my like he's just the nicest guy and he's got an incredible voice and i just love him and yeah and then like we thought we started following this this chris lloyd on instagram and we saw that that painting and absolutely loved it and, and then I yeah the, and, then, and then lauren got the me the first wedding anniversary is paper so yeah. I bought David that as a piece of art, and then yeah, and it's, in your, it. it's in your office, isn't it? It is. It's on your desk. We should put it on the wall, really. Although, do you like yeah. having it there? I do like. No, I would like it up on the wall yeah. somewhere. Nice. But one day, I'd love to try and get Sam Ryder to some way, somehow, to sign it. Well, there we go. Someday, somehow. Um, how are you enjoying the Women's Prize long list? I am having an enjoyable time reading it. I always do. Um, I've only loved two books from it, so I've read. I think. Six. So I've loved Brotherless Night and Night Bloom. Um, I'm currently reading three. I'm currently reading The Wren, The Wren. Um, oh no, thank you. Um, Enter Ghost and a, a Trace of Sun. They're all going fine. The Wren, The Wren's going better than I thought it would. Um, I've read Eight Lives of a Century Year Old Trickster. The Maiden, The Maiden I enjoyed more than I thought I was going to as well, um, and yeah, maybe that is it then, so that's it. Oh, River East, River West, I listened to the audiobook of that and I didn't really like that very much either. So yeah, it's going fine, but I will say that both Night Bloom and Brotherless Night have both been two of my favourite books of the year so far, so very, very pleased to hear that. Um, favourite book so far this year? Probably one of those. Um, Brotherless Night, probably, but Night Bloom I did really enjoy, but probably Brotherless Night. David, what's been your favourite book so far? You've um, probably the... What's the money one I've read? That one. It's behind you. It's called What They Don't Tell what You... What They Don't Tell You About What money. They Don't Teach You About Money, yeah. which I'm going to read as well. Yeah, that's my favourite book. Oh, good. Um, hi, Lauren, can you please suggest where to begin with learning cross-stitch? I would love to give it a go. 
Well, David began with a cross stitch kit, kit from um, uh, Caterpillar cross, cross Stitch, which is where I've got a lot of people's cross mm -hmm. stitch. I, I bought my sister and my mum a cross stitch kit for Christmas as well. And it's also, I found out about them because I signed up for their Christmas cross stitch project, which you think you're going to do this year, where they release Definitely a little bit of pattern year. over six years, and it was at uh, six weeks, and it was really, really fun. Um, I only wish that I'd started it maybe a little bit earlier. I came to it quite late, so I did get to finish it. So I'm going to finish that this year. Yeah, and I'll David's going to do the new one. But yeah, Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Yeah. Um, that's where I'd probably suggest, because all of their patterns seemed quite... Well, I mean, you'd never done it before ever. And no, you picked and it up picked instantly, it up really didn't you? Quickly, and so, I yeah. loved it. There we go. Um, are there any surgical procedures that you consider to help with your period pain? Yeah, I think I would consider many things to help with period pain. Um, I've recently seen a gynaecologist for my period pain um, and they've suggested due to my extremely tight cervix um, that I get a coil fitted but because of the aforementioned extremely tight cervix um, they would have to put me under anaesthetic to fit the coil um, which I'm being listed for so it's already in consideration and let's have a look some of these are very similar to ones we've already answered do you ever want to work within the book world in some way or do you prefer to keep it as a hobby? I think I would prefer to keep it as a hobby. I'm very happy with it. It's always been a hobby for me. Yeah, I wonder how much it would sort of take, although that's happened with you. You really enjoy video editing and that's your job now. Mm -hmm. but, but, yeah. now but now I don't do it in my spare time now. No, that's true. Although I did mention earlier that you were think, thinking of bringing yeah. that. Right, okay. So that, that was almost it. So the last question is, Let's have a look. Some of these. Somebody else has asked, where do you get your cross stitch patterns and materials from? Caterpillar cross stitch, but also try Etsy. I've got a lot of a lot of the things I've done for gifts this year have been from Etsy. Yep. Last question, David. Let me find yes. one. Purely for me. Well, there wasn't any purely for you because I didn't oh. ask for any purely for you. Why not? Because you are well, too cute. Delete this video and start again. No, no, no. Come on, all of these are, I'm trying to find one, oh, see if there's one about spring. We're having a bit of a flat finish. Yeah, I don't want it to be a, a flat finish. Oh, here we go, this is a great one. Anything on your spring bucket list? No. No, <laughs> really? No, I, there isn't really. Um, I'd like to get out to a few walks, like a few proper walks as well, rather than like I'd like to think, oh, we're gonna walk from here to here. I'd like to, Park the car somewhere, then get the bus or the train somewhere, and then walk back to the car. I'd like to do that at some point. Emma and her parents have done that a few times. Yeah. Um, well, we need to go coastal and do. Yeah, one of, one I would of like those. to do like a coastal. There, there, thing. There's a really big coastal walk, which is where I think you go from like Ramsgate to Mar. I don't know something, and yeah. it's, and I think it takes about two hours. I would each like way. to do that. Um, I'd also like to have a proper big spring clean. I know we've rearranged, but I felt like we didn't do the big spring clean. No, we haven't like this year, and we should do that, shouldn't um, we, before it starts to get too hot. And something I've already started doing, I've been a bit more lax about it, is that because now, what I've said to myself, now the clocks have gone forward, um, when I get home from work, or in the week, if I'm working from home, um, when I finish work, I go and sit outside, we've got a little bit of shared space with the other flats that we live in a in an apartment block with, and just go and sit out there and have a cup of tea and a read. And I've been doing that where I've been able to. The weather's not great. I've still been out there when it's been cold, but if it's raining, I'm not gonna go out there. And if I've got somewhere I've got a jet off to after work, I haven't been doing it. So yeah, I will continue with that as jet well. Seller. So there we go. That was a lovely Q&A, wasn't it? Hope you're all having a lovely Sunday. David and I are now off to the cinema. Not quite yet, but soon. Um, and then we've got uh, fake chicken pie and- Mash. Mash for dinner. Oh. With a bit of veg. With, with some bitch runner beans, I think, or- Oh, lovely for dinner. Beans. And yeah, what's on telly? We haven't really been watching anything on no. telly, have we? But Race Around the World starts this Wednesday. And just I'm very it just excited. Whooped when he heard it on the sh in the shower on the radio. Right, there we go. Then we'll call that a day. Should we pose for a thumbnail? No.